All right, guys, let's jump right in. It's that time of day. Don't you just love it? So uh, first thing I'm going to stick right out there is the most wonderful thing that you could ever imagine in your life. It is called the new purchase agreement, okay? I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a highlight, too. Let's see if I can actually do this. Things get a little crazy for me as well. I'm going to stop the share just for one second. And I am going to go back into, do, 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 where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? Too many files opened up. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, maybe it's here. That's it. Let's see, share. Yeah. Can you all see my website there? All right. And I'm going to start here because there's a reason for my uh, my madness, okay? Of course, this is my website. For those of you who've never been on it, it isn't because I'm trying to promote Tom Trujillo, but my website is TomTrujilloRealEstate.com. So, you know, uh, Ted, maybe you can put that in the in the chat. TomTrujilloRealEstate.com, spelled correctly. And I really pretty much do this for the newer brokers, but it's going to be beneficial for all the senior brokers as well. If you go across the top of my, my, uh, my menu here, you'll see some various classes. And the first one that you see where it says brokers classes, if you click on that, it says PA update 2221-2001 and up pops this wonderful website in YouTube of our, uh, our attorney, our general counsel for NMAR. And that is, uh, of course, Ashley Strauss Martin. Okay. There's a reason that I want you guys to see that and have access to it because everybody should be getting these kind of updates directly from our attorney. I'm not an attorney. She is. And of course, these forms that we deal with every day uh, are with her. If you ever notice at the very bottom of the YouTubes down there, you'll see a little number that goes, that's basically says 02, five, and it's for 55 minutes and seven seconds for the entire thing, but it starts there. And of course, as you go through it, it moves, right? And there's a reason I am telling you this, because I'm gonna stop the share for a second, go back to my page here. Right across the annotated, which I can supply to you guys if you send me an email that you need it. Right up there, you'll see PAU, which means prop, uh, 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 Purchase Agreement Updates. This is Ashley's video, and it tells you how to get there. But most importantly, right along when we go on these sides, I will show you that I have highlighted the time that specific item is spoken about. So if you get confused on one thing on the new purchase agreement, you can go directly to where she talks about it, okay? So that's just trying to make things a little easier. The other thing you'll see here is highlighted in pink throughout the purchase agreement. Those are the forms that relate to the purchase agreement. And as I said to you guys earlier, there's a total of 32 additional addendums, info sheets, whatever it may be that you may want to utilize more than likely need to utilize with your purchase agreement. For example, if you uh, uh, have a septic or if you have a well or if you have an HOA, okay? So as promised, I'm not gonna go through each line that we have here that is for Monday and Tuesday for the brokers. You are all welcome to join it. But what we're gonna go through today is pretty much the highlights and the new updates. And again, I am gonna scroll through this and we're gonna go right to the first update that's in the purchase agreement. And it is highlighted in blue, all the new updates. And on now page three, for those of you who have not uploaded it, but will be seeing it, we now actually have an index. And you can see my little sarcasm while we have come to this. Pluses and minuses with it, it certainly does help you as a broker when your uh, buyer calls you and say, you know, I really don't understand this whole thing about a uh, home warranty contract. Well, you can go right to that index and you can see that it's on page 20, uh, paragraph 25, page 13. 
Same thing goes when you're talking the other way to your client and say, well, I, what I really need you to do is go to page uh, 11, item 28, and it will talk about the pre-closing uh, walkthrough. So versus trying to be negative about it, let's use it as a tool, probably something that can work out for everybody. But it does freak me out a little bit to see that we are actually growing to having an index on our purchase agreement, all right? Here's new. They've changed it up a little bit, okay? You can see that the new thing, it says the name of the buyers. As I always tell everybody, always ask them how they do their professional documents, all right? And of course, also the same thing with their address. You can always get it through Paragon. But there's just the basically the new part. They changed it up a little bit from buyer and seller now on, the, on, those, on that page uh, as well. And here's a first example. You can see if you were looking at that video, the uh, purchase agreement update, that's the Ashley Martin video. It starts on number 0.25 and it goes to 0.258. So you don't have to go through the whole thing. If you, that's all you wanted to know, there you go, okay? Another new item right here, something that's changed, the sold and separate, okay? If a buyer or seller married, a sold and separate agreement is required by the title company and the lender, okay? They shall now deliver this sold and separate agreement to the title company. Why are we doing that? There are people, I've been through this myself, that all of a sudden it's only one person of the married couple who is actually buying the property sold and separate. Guess what that sold and separate the addendum says, okay, Tom, you can sell your house sold and separate, but you're going to need the signature of your wife that she knows you're selling it. So new update, probably a good thing. I know I've had this uh, happen to me in the past, and I'm not so sure that the man really wanted his wife to know he was selling the condo in Santa Fe. Not even sure she even knew he had a condo in Santa Fe, but it was fun. All right. Here we go. Another item that was added there was number three off the market. You can look at it on the update, what Ashley says, 258 through 609. But basically what it is, is it now basically says that when you're under contract, in truth, it's off the market. Now that does not mean that you can't have it as pending please show. That does not mean that you can't do an open house if you truly want to, but it is technically off the market until the contract has been consummated or in the event of a termination. So they really are trying to, to, to make sure brokers and again, the person that you're writing this agreement for have an understanding because a lot of times what will happen, I've, I've had it happen, I'm sure a lot of you have at one point or another, all of a sudden, you know, you, you, you're under contract and then you do an open house and your buyer's going, why are you doing an open house? Well, we all know that uh, sometimes those open houses are designed for us to get more buyers, right? We also know that we may be trying to solicit some backup offers, right? Okay, now you will see in Ashley's uh, video that she says she really doesn't encourage having an open house after the fact. And if you do have an open house, you better make sure your seller is in agreement of you having the open house while it's under contract. And ironically, she quotes a brokerage in Santa Fe that has had an open house after the fact and the individual slipped and fell in the garage and now there's a lawsuit. I happen to know who that brokerage was. So that's just something to be aware of. So if you're gonna do an open house after the fact, that it's under contract, please get the permission of your seller and make sure they're aware of the fact that there's a certain level of liability. There's a reason that we want them to always maintain their insurance, right? Okay. Here we go. Keep on going. This is all kind of all the same stuff there. You can see I highlighted all that for everybody. And again, I can get you an annotated copy if you send me an email. Okay, here we go. Personal property. They've added items more than anything. Some of this we kind of saw it on the last rendition, but you can start seeing they've broken things down quite a bit. Now they're talking about the audio components and video components instead of it just being electronic devices. Uh, this is the new one that just made me a little crazy. 
garage door remotes, they now have a place that you will say, how many garage door remotes do you have? Personal experience, I have bought a lot of garage doors. I'm sure a lot of the other brokers as well, because guess what? You know, when the movers came into the house, they cleaned out that junk drawer that had everything, including the garage door openers. And then the walkthrough happens and they says, where's the garage door openers? Oh, they're on their way to Lubbock. So this thing states here, note, if the number of garage door opener remotes is left blank, the seller's obligation shall be no more than one working remote. That's fine and dandy uh, if there's only a one door garage, but as we all know, you got a two door garage, there's normally a remote to each. So don't get caught with that one. So when you're going through this with your, uh, with your uh, buyer, excuse me, with your seller, uh, on the other side, say this person says they want all two, don't leave without them. Minor stuff as such. All right, this is a new one. Again, you can see it on Ashley's uh, video, purchase agreement 808, 803 to 911. You don't want to look at the other stuff. And this talks about cash purchase. All right, buyer shall purchase the subject property for cash and certifies that the funds are now readily available. Contingent on the closing of a cash out finance, refinance, maybe selling a home or refining an existing home or other. That could be stocks, a retirement fund, a 401. All right. So it's changed in the fact that, you know, in the cash, it would say they've got cash. And then, you know, send us a letter of verification. They are now asking us, is it readily available, contingent on, blah, blah, blah. That can be a benefit, a plus and a minus to you, as you well know. Because if you check off contingent on a closing and there's three, there's three offers on the table that are cash, well, that readily available might be there, okay? It might, or they may have it in the bank or they may even have uh, stocks that can be uh, uh, remedied quickly. And as we all know, sometimes it's not so quickly able to sell stuff that you have in your IRA or your 401, okay? Tom, is that where you would put a 1031? Absolutely. You could, it, it gives you the space for 1031, but you could identify it there as well, Millie. Okay. Thank you. Same thing goes down here. And these are things that, although I go a little line by line with the, the newer brokers, take the time to read these things a little bit uh, with your people because it, being a loan, written application, okay, good time to do, have the discussion with the lender uh, who will get a copy of the signed agreement. So if you are working with, uh, Annette or working with Sandra, they're going to be asking you for that uh, agreement anyway. It's a good time for you to open up that conversation with them to say, this is what's going on. Okay. This is not part of the new one, but I did highlight it. And I'm asking people to remember if the buyer changes lenders after delivery of the prequal letter, buyer shall notify the seller and provide a prequalification to the seller within two days. That's on your back. So if it changes, make sure that you get a new letter of prequal from the new lender. Don't make that assumption of going down the road. I had one issue that we kind of got entangled to and they had changed lenders early in the race. The terms weren't always the best for the, uh, for the seller, the way it turned out. And we did not know about that uh, change of lender until the week before the actual transaction was gonna close. So now, you have to make sure you follow through on that. All right, something new. In the event the lender determines buyer will not qualify for the loan by the settlement date, this is the fun one, buyer shall deliver a written rejection letter from the lender no later than blank days before the signing date, or if not otherwise indicated, not later than three days before the settlement date, okay? So those are defaults. So now in the way the, the agreements are reading, you know, people would leave them blank and everybody was in nebula, okay? Not anymore. If it's in nebula, they have now put in the contract, oh, that means three days, okay? Moving forward. So Tom, I uh, can I ask a question? I, sure, I usually uh, put a quick question like 21 days before closing so that the seller is assured that we're not going to fall apart. And, and, and I think the other thing behind that too, 
is I'm seeing a lot of counters like that, and and Marie, uh, because what happens is you know we might put the three days in there, but you might get a counter, and they're going to go, no, 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 we want to know 15, 20 days ahead of time. Okay, that's a really a really good uh, counter situation if you're on the uh, on the seller side, just so you know. Okay, <clears throat> appraisal contingency, and uh, the only reason I did this is. Notice the boxes they've changed. Remember those itty bitty little boxes we had on the old ones? They're big now. So uh, everybody should miss it. I, I can't tell you how many times in compliance it gets kicked back. You didn't get this sign, you get that. Part of it is the little boxes are real small. So you'll start seeing that the boxes are a little bigger. All right. We got a lot to go over. You can see on uh, Monday and Tuesday. So if you uh, want to jump in on Monday and Tuesday, anybody, you're welcome to do it, okay? This is the short version of it. Okay, new assessments. Buyer may choose to close subject to assessments or to terminate this agreement. If buyer chooses to close, the current instance installment of assessments shall be prorated through the settlement. Signing date and buyer shall assume future installments. If buyer timely terminates, any earnest money shall be uh, refunded to the buyer, okay? So we get caught up a lot of times in assessment. This is where the prorations come into play. So I think most of us get that, but there are those times that when things are not working 100%, who's paying for what? How does the proration works? If you miss deadlines, how does that gonna work, okay? And the other thing that has happened, and this is the crazy one right here, is this one here is what I call, I'm gonna read it to you guys and we'll talk through it. In the event the title company, through no fault of the buyer or the seller, is unable to issue a title commitment, and I use five, at least five days prior to the settlement date, or if not, under, or if not otherwise indicated, at least five days prior to the settlement signing date, then the settlement date shall automatically be extended to 14 days, five days, whatever not, whatever it is, or if not other indicated, up to 14 days. So there's an automatic extension involved now. All right. Onward, if the title company is unable to issue a commitment, at least, and I use five, it could be three or whatever, prior to the expiration of automatic extension, or if not uh, otherwise indicated, at least five days prior to the expiration, extension of this party agreement is delivering writing notice to the other the earnest money to be refunded. All right, what's happening in the real world? What's happening is the deadlines are all over the map. Uh, Ashley uses in her update, there it is, 1250 to 2126, an example of up in Northern New Mexico where the individual was unable to get the commitment from the title company for 120 days. Do you want to kill the deal because the title company can't get it? The thing is you're communicating to that title company said, what's realistic? And as we well know, and a lot of people have sold in Northern New Mexico, you know, sometimes things aren't as clear as it may be in a property here, downtown city, Santa Fe, where commitment forms and, and all the chain of title is re readily available. So that could also be in the past, we used to always have to use an amendment to extend, extend, and extend. But this gives you good warning and good conversation to have with your title people. You know, what's the reality for you guys? How much time do you really need? Because when you're doing that, you're truly are helping both parties, the seller and the buyer. So they don't have this expectation of saying, wow, they're gonna get it done all in 30 days when things can't be done that easily, all right? So I urge everybody to go back and take a look at that and listen to her extended story. It's a little lengthy one. That's why I didn't want to beat you guys up too long, but it starts at 1250 and it goes to 2120. And again, if you guys email me uh, for the annotated version, I will send it to you. I don't so put it anymore as a download because uh, you know this is our stuff internally. And I don't, I actually have had other brokers from other brokerages call me up for my annotated uh, uh, contracts. And I said, well, join KW and you can get them all day long. Okay. So Tom, I have a question on that little paragraph there. Do you recommend us putting in, like it automatically has the default dates, but do you recommend us just copying the same date and putting it in there? Like I did. You did? 
Yeah, I did at this point, uh, Millie, but uh, I'm not so sure I would do it again. I, okay. I probably would go in there, you know, I know a lot of you guys know I work with Denise. So, you know, I would call Denise and say, hey, Denise, you know, you know give me a realistic time of when you can get these things to me. And okay. then that's probably how I would prepare the purchase agreement. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Do again. Here we go. So I think I talked to one of you guys today about this. Uh, and you can see here, for, they now have prior title policy retrieval fee and title policy cancel fee. Truth be said is that the uh, NMAR form is ahead of the title companies, but it beware that it's coming, that when people cancel or the deal falls apart, who's going to be paying for those fees that the title uh, company has incurred? At this point, I defaulted it over to the sellers. It may be one of those things that uh, the seller may counter back on, or it may even be the point that when you talk to the title company, it may be, you know what, guys, we're not going to charge either party, so it might be non not required. So what I am finding in, the, in throughout this uh, agreement, no different than the way we talk to our, our lenders all the time, uh, we need to step it up and be talking to our title people. Find out what makes them comfortable as well. Okay. I'll, I'll stick that there just for you guys. Deletions one through four, people are always asking me, what does it mean, what does it mean, what does it mean? And it doesn't matter whether you're a new broker or you're a seasoned broker. If you look right there, it says Tom Trujillo, realestate.com. And if you go to my menu, it says PDFs and you can download a PDF of the deletions one through four, okay? Here's another one here. They've just moved it. If you remember, and it's still in place, the home warranty paragraph, buying a home warranty, they now have moved it into the miscellaneous ones as well. New location, depends if you're gonna be dealing with it, but just something added new. Isn't this fun, guys? Here we go. Let's see if I can get through some more of this. Just highlights, guys, that although this isn't brand new, I'm seeing more and more things coming with uh, solar panels, okay? If you have solar panels, there's your, your uh, forms that you need to go to, all right? Plus the benefit behind all that is, you know, they may be leased, they may be bought. So when you're walking around the house, you go, oh, this is a great house, you know, tr see if you can peek up top the roof because there's a lot of people selling property and they go, oh, I forgot about the solar panels. I had one issue with that. Famous one here, underlined again, not a brand new thing. Buyer's failure to timely object, object or terminate based on the above documentation shall be deemed a waiver of the buyer's right to object or terminate based on the above document. It shall not be considered a uh, default. What does that mean? That means follow the deadlines that you impose on your agreement. Make your calendar work for you. Make sure that your uh, opposite side of the party has that same calendar and you can do that. It is a train wreck when people get off it. I, you know, I'm lecturing to, 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 to a lot of you guys who have you know, come into my office and said, well, we missed the deadline uh, and, and now they want to terminate. They want to terminate based on this document or that document. What can we do? Then it's a matter, can we revive it or not? Can we create new amendments? You know, It's just a lot easier if you pay attention to what your deadlines look like. This isn't brand new, but they, she highlighted it again. And this is a purchase agreement update 29.28 to 3140 on, on uh, Ashley's video. The buyer investigation of the surrounding area, it's a hard one. By entering into this agreement, buyer represents he is satisfied with the neighborhood and surrounding area and agrees that any issue regarding the surrounding area will not serve as grounds for termination of this agreement. So if you're uh, by a, um, an individual who's on the sex offender list, that is their responsibility to make sure they've checked that out. And if you're over there by a, uh, I don't know, a, a, a schmoo or whatever, well, they've got to check it out. It's those kind of things that can trip up a, 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 an agreement when all of a sudden after the fact, they find out that, you know, oh my God, the solid waste station is right next door to me. 
I didn't know that. We want out. That's their responsibility. So when you're put together this purchase agreement, you may have to stop the whole train. And of course, in this market, it's not fun to do because there's 20 other con people who want to buy it. But you may want to stop the whole train and say, by the way, have you taken a look at that? I tell uh, my newer brokers that when you are preparing your agreement, do not immediately send them to things on DocuSign or DotLoop or Instanet. Send them a PDF. Ask them to read it, to look it over so we can talk about it when you're ready to do the signing. Okay? Don't wait to the last minute. Okay. <sighs> Going into objections. New, new line here, seller's response. This is kind of interesting. I'm going to read it. Sorry to keep you guys going. Seller may agree to cure buyer's objections as requested and may provide an alternative cure for the buyer's objection or may refuse to cure the buyer's objection. This is the line. Seller may not terminate this agreement based on the fact that the buyer made objections. What does that mean? That means that you're in the contract and all of a sudden the uh, buyer says, hey, I object to putting on the new roof. And the seller gets it and says, screw this guy. I'm not gonna object to that. I'm not gonna do it. No, he can't just walk away and you can just terminate it because he doesn't wanna do it. He's obligated to say no. Then if they say, well, okay, we're still good to go or if they accept his no, the contract moves forward. And I have had many people communicate to me and saying, well, guess what? The seller wants out because the person uh, wrote these items and he doesn't like the seller anyway. They met and he doesn't like her. And now uh, we're not going to do anything they asked and we're terminating. You can't do that. The seller has to say no. So just as I have here, my little red, I just can't terminate because buyer has objection. Seller can say no, 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 no. And when the buyer says, okay, uncle, I don't want it anymore. I want to terminate. Different story. Fun one. Again, just uh, more notation. The, the language hasn't changed about the home warranty uh, contract. But I, as I pointed out there on the table, uh, it's now part of a cost to be paid in miscellaneous on the cost up there before, okay? An expiration date means the date the party is revoking his or her offer or counter offer. This is a fun one. An offer is no longer capable of accepting after it expires. Consequently, if the party intends to accept the offer or counter offer, it must be accepted before the expiration date. If the party intends to make a counter offer, it does not need to be made by an extension date because a counter offer serves as both a rejection of the original offer or counter offer and is considered a new offer. Okay, it's a little confusing, but really what it is, is stay in deadlines. Play it safe. If you get a counter offer and it expires at five o'clock this afternoon, you got to tell your people, man, we, we've got to perform. Because otherwise what happens is now you're doing addendums and you're doing amendments, you're doing everything else, when all you really have to do is stay within your contract. So you can see that a lot of the legal issues that Ashley speaks about in her video is because of deadlines. It's sloppy brokerage. We all know that. And not all of us are at fault. I've been there too. That, you know, oh my God, I missed it by a day or I missed it by a couple hours. I loved a, one of our newer brokers who uh, had a offer and he had multiple offers, was expecting a third offer. And yet uh, the uh, seller said, no, we're going to take this offer instead. <coughs> the uh, the broker came back and called our broker and said, hey, guess what? We're, we're sending it over right now. He said, well, I told you the deadline was 3 o'clock. It's now 3.08. They've already signed. Now, there's a broker who understands deadlines. 
not so happy. The other broker from that blue company saying, well, is there any way? No, we've already signed. I gave you a heads up and, and time to, to get it in at three o'clock. It's now 308. Not necessarily a popularity contest. All right, deadline defaults. In the event party fails to perform by a specific deadline, the non-defaulting party shall provide written notice to the defaulting party of the nature and the extent of the deadline default. Notice, here's a new one. New Mexico Association Realtor Form 2112. Notice of default in opportunity cure, okay? The defaulting party shall have two days from receipt of the notice to cure the de deadline default, default, opportunity to cure. If after the notice of opportunity to cure, the defaulting party fails to cure the deadline default, then the non-defaulting party may elect to seize further performance under the agreement. In this event, the non-defaulting party may retain the earnest money and pursue any additional remedies allowable by law. In the alternative, the non-defaulting party may elect to waive the deadline default, in which case both parties remain responsible for all obligations and retains all rights and remedies available upon the agreement. What a bunch of gob gobbledygook. What it means is that you now have, and I think this should show, can you see that? The new notification of deadline default. So if there is a default within the contract, be it timeline, be whatever it is, this is now what you get to send to the other party. The non-defaulting party, and goes both ways, can say, hey, Valerie, you missed this timeline. You've missed this septic intact. What are you doing about it? Can you, you know, you got two days to get your documents to me. All right. So, uh, you know, I grimaced at first with it, but as time went on, I get it. And, uh, you know, when you sit in this chair, guys, you begin to have a little bit more respect and love for what Ashley goes through. Uh, because, you know, yeah, I deal with 185 of you guys, but she deals with the whole state. And so uh, I think I told her the other day, I think you're getting meaner. You may be a very nice lady, but you're getting meaner in your old age. She's I'm not that old, Tom. Here we go. New one. Purchase agreement 4950 to 5441. Buyers are encouraged to terminate the availability of the home and other inspections. The buyer intends to engage prior to entry into this agree agreement. Okay. Force majeure events may impact the availability of home and other inspectors and vendors needed to conduct inspection and or repairs. Force majeure is also inclusive of pandemics now. The parties are expected to deviate from their primary selections of inspectors and or vendors when necessary to meet inspections and repair deadlines in the agreement. So what that's saying, if you call your favorite inspector and says, oh, guess what, I, I have COVID and I can't get out or I traveled out of state and I now have 14 days to stay at home, I can't do it, find another inspector. Don't use that as an excuse. If it's legitimate, it is legitimate. But there are a lot of people beginning to try to hide behind that. And that's what they're trying to move away from. The Tom, what if, what if, speaking, you just brought that up, what if you have a listing broker that's using that excuse to deliver docs to you. You can go back to the default uh, document that we just talked about, the notification cool. default. Okay, they Thank still you. have to be able to do that. Now, you know, we, we don't all wanna be just callous, but we also know that business is business and we have to move forward and things have right. to be done. I mean, uh, I, I look at, at you, Millie, and I know that you work for the Tessero team. Well, I know there's more than just Millie, if God forbid you got ill, well, I'd be calling the broker, I'd be calling Brian and say, Brian, uh, I'm sorry, Millie's really ill, but we still need these documents. Yeah, okay. right. Excellent. Okay, where are we? Wire fraud alert. I think this is one that uh, was asked earlier today by uh, Mr. Weber. Uh, we will be moving to eliminate the wire fraud um, re report that we've had in the past. This will suffice. Okay. think that is it kids that's the summary so it's not all that painful okay it's not all that painful guys 
I really do encourage you to take a look at Ashley's uh, video. Uh, it doesn't hurt. If you are indeed looking at, at uh, feeling that you need a little bit more detail, we are going to be going through it Monday through uh, uh, Monday at one o'clock and Tuesday at one o'clock, pages one through eight, Monday and nine through 16. And it is designed, of course, for our newer brokers, but I encourage everybody to get on it if you haven't been through it before, because there's a lot of things in there that uh, you'll give you the opportunity, you know, to quiz my brain to see if I know anything about this business. Okay. Any things that scare you guys or uh, that we need to talk a little bit further on? Woo! If you email me, as I said, at tom at trio.com or tom trio at kw.com, I will be happy to share the annotated copy that is for you only in your eyes. Uh, as I said, I've had other brokerages call me or another people who are another brokerage and say, Tom, will you send me your annotated? No, I love you, but just join Keller Williams and you can have it all day long. So uh, that's, uh, of course, for everybody as well. Okay. Not too painful. Okay, guys, I appreciate everybody uh, jumping on. It's a good to uh, have there. Thank you guys very much. Anna Marie, thank you for the comments. Uh, is there any other chats that I, that I am missing? Yeah, that I should be knowing about. Lots of thank yous. Okay, well, the thank yous we thank can you. do, but I, and I appreciate all you guys, but if you, uh, <laughs> Robert, you're always my classic. If you are there through, it's now through, you snooze, you lose. So there you go. Uh, hopefully you guys stay out of trouble because if you stay out of trouble, you keep me out of trouble. Love you all. Hey, See you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom.